Doc Ock has commandeered the airwaves and outed Phil Urich as the Hobgoblin. The Daily Bugle is in shock. An incredulous Nora Winters questions how Phil could lie to her, while Robbie Robertson desperately tries to get a handle on the situation. Alerted to Phil's whereabouts, Doc and his minions move towards the paper's offices. While en route, one of the minions is captured by Wraith, Police Captain Watanabe's alter ego. With Carly's help, she interrogates the hired mercenary to learn these spider henchmen are paid from a large offshore account. Meanwhile, at the Bugle, as Doc arrives, Phil loses his composure, momentarily taking Nora hostage before unleashing his sonic scream. The damage is mitigated as Doc detonates the subdermal nanotracers he planted last issue and separates Phil from the civilians inside the Bugle. With a crowd gathering outside and with Phil mentally and physically beaten, Doc debates performing another public execution, but he thinks better of it and hands Phil over to the authorities. Phil's incarceration, however, does not last long. The Green Goblin orchestrates his escape and pulls Phil into his organization. Phil Urich is the newly christened Goblin Knight. So just as quickly as he's captured, Hobgoblin is released and becomes the Goblin Knight. Slot really seems to be going incredibly heavy with this medieval motif for the Goblin King. I really like the motif. The art style for the goblin army is really, really cool. With their masks, their goblin masks. The goblin masks and the knight himself, it seems like he has got bulky armor on. He looks like a knight, a medieval knight. And uh, I'm really liking where he's going with this. I think it'll be interesting to see, since we know Phil Urich was working for the previous hobgoblin, Roderick Kingsley, um, how that's going to come back. Because Kingsley obviously wants his money. Yeah. <laughs> so is the goblin going to protect him or what? Well, he seems to indicate that Kingsley means nothing now. And the hobgoblin or this his role as the goblin knight is all that matters, should matter to Ulrich at this point. And all he should focus on is going after Spidey. So Kingsley, I think, is going to be more of like an afterthought. I think goblin has so much power at this point. Stuff like that's not going to matter. Well, who knows, maybe even Kingsley could become an uh, ally for the Spear of Spider-Man when it comes to war with uh, the Goblin army. That would be interesting. The Spear of Spider-Man is going to have to look out for more people going after him now because I think Wraith and uh, Carly are getting closer and closer to... Interrogating his men? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're following the money right now, but I... The money's going to lead back to Jameson, though. Exactly. So I don't know if that's going to be a dead end or if that's just going to lead to Jameson eventually giving in and saying, this guy blackmailed me. Because I think Jameson does have a tipping point, and I think eventually he's going to reach that. And he can't be blackmailed all the time just because Jameson's a very strong-willed character. Looking at some of the fallout on the Daily Bugle side of things, Uruk obviously hurt the reputation of their <laughs> paper. <laughs> Again. But... <laughs> But worse than that, his uncle kind of gets screwed over, and Nora Winters gets fired. I'm really curious what she's going to do now. Is she's going to be like a freelancer for a little while? Is she going to work with Spidey? Is she going to work against Spidey? I think it might actually end up following the pattern of Clark Kent in the Superman series in the DC Universe. He quits because of journalistic integrity, yeah. and now he's working at a blog. And I think that's kind of like a very new age, up-to-date, kind of take on journalism now. I think what Nora could end up doing is creating the counter uh, viewpoint to what Spear Spider-Man's trying to do. Spear Spider-Man's trying to set himself as the real savior of the city, a real protector. And in this uh, issue, he comes across that even more because he publicly gets uh, Ulrich outed and takes him down. And I think Nora might be able to go and find out that crime still exists and sort of uncover the goblin's underlying influence everywhere. And if she does that on the internet, then it really can't be stopped. Exactly. And we've already seen Superior Spider-Man unable to combat anything on the internet through the Screwball fiasco. She could work with Screwball. That's like her new business partner. <laughs> yeah, if they're still like capable of doing anything after their beatdown. <laughs> As a grade, though, for Superior Spider-Man number 16, what would you give it? I'd give it a 4 out of 5. I think this was a fun issue, and it's getting really back to what I enjoyed about Superior Spider-Man originally. I'm going to give this issue a 3 out of 5. It didn't really impress me too much because Hobgoblin was immediately freed after being captured, so there was almost no lasting repercussions to that side of the story. Thanks for watching B3 Comics Review, Superior Spider-Man number 16. Before we go, we have a question for you. As we said earlier, Slot is really going heavy with this medieval goblin motif. Who do you think would be a good goblin jester <laughs> or a goblin queen? There's a lot of choices out there. We want to hear yours. Put your thoughts in the comments below, and if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up.